Linda Killian, welcome to Afterwards. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. So, just tell us, what is the swing vote about? Well, the swing vote, it's about our political system. It's, it's sort of where we're at and, and where everything is right now. But the impetus for the book was that 40% of all American voters are independents, more than either Republicans or Democrats, uh, which to me means they are dissatisfied with the system and dissatisfied with the two parties. And I've been covering politics for a long time, and I wanted to address this. I wanted to get at what are these voters looking for, who are these voters, what do they care about, what do they want, and how can we fix things? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think anyone could say that we, our system hasn't become fairly dysfunctional. Right. Um, so uh, this, this largest voting block in the nation um, have determined the outcome of every election since World War II, these swing voters that the book is named for. And they're tired of being ignored and unrepresented and not having a say, really, in how po politics and government is run. And I begin the book with Thomas Paine. I end the book with Thomas Paine. Um, not to be too grandiose, and someone accused me of using a Newt Gingrich word last night when I used that word at an event. but. Uh, common sense, uh, the, the sort of right, Thomas Paine book that lit the fuse of the revolution, um, was a call for a democratic republic to be governed by the people. And I think we need to return to that. I don't think we're really there right now. And so I think that was, I hoped in some small way to also light a fire under the people and get them going and get them motivated. So just tell us why we should be worried about this. Why is this a problem? Well, our system is fundamentally undemocratic in a number of ways. One of the ways is closed primaries. So in half the states in the country, 40% of all the voters can't participate in the primaries. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they have no say in who gets nominated. Uh, and as a result, we get more and more extreme candidates on both ends of the spectrum who are nominated by the party activists. And then that's who we're getting elected to Congress, um, coupled with the way congressional districts are drawn, another big problem, which is leaving out the middle. The middle is totally disappearing in Congress. Centrists are totally disappearing. Mm. And so you have the far left and the far right and unable to cut deals, unable to govern, which is why I think we have Congress with a 9% approval rating right, right. now. Yeah. Um, my reading of the book indicated that while you do certainly blame both sides for this problem, I sense that you blame one side more than the other. <laughs> is that a fair reading? And that side is the Republican side. I think you're right. Um, I, I will say that I set out to blame both sides equally. You know, when I started reporting mm -hmm. the book, when I started writing the book, I felt both parties had moved more to the extreme and had been ignoring the center. But I think in reporting the book, and of course I've been rep I was reporting the book for the past two years, the Tea Party had sort of been rising during that time and making its voice heard. And so you had some very spectacular, prominent um, primary elections in 2010. For example, in Delaware, where Mike Castle was challenged by a, a questionably qualified candidate, Christine, I am not a witch, O'Donnell. Mike Castle, who had been governor, was congressman for many years, very popular in the state, a centrist Republican. And you had Republicans saying, being quoted, mostly Tea Party people saying, I don't care if Mike Castle loses. I don't want him in Congress. He's not the kind of Republican we want. Mm. And this sort of cleansing, you know, that of the centrist Democrats, I mean, excuse me, of the centrist Republicans that are, you know, they call them rhinos, Republican in name only. Right. The Republicans do that, not the Democrats. And then you had the election in Alaska where um, Lisa Murkowski, the sitting senator, was challenged by the Tea Party. Um, Jim DeMint, a member of her own party, sitting with her as a senator, raised money against her for a Tea Party candidate. She lost that primary and she said, ah, forget this, 
and she ran as a write-in candidate and she won. More than 50% of all the voters in Alaska are registered independents. So I do think there's been more of a cleansing and more of a purity test on the Republican side. I, th I think the Republicans have moved way to the right. I think this recent birth control debacle, you know, mm -hmm. when 98% of all women use birth control, Catholic women and women of every other faith, I think this is the kind of social, you know, right-wing effort to inject religion into the public sphere that I think centrist voters, independent voters don't like. And I, they think the economy is the big problem, you know, the deficit is the big problem, uh, there are other issues, but, but we've moved past issues like whether gay people should be able to get married or, you know, abortion should be a private choice. On the Democratic side, I think the Democrats kind of had their big swing to the left in the 1970s, you know, when George McGovern ran for president. And I think they had their realignment. I think Bill Clinton obviously was more of a centrist president. Not all the left Democrats liked him, uh, but he was their, their, their last standard bearer, you know, uh, before Barack Obama. And so I do think it's tough for centrist Democrats, but it's more a question, I think, that they tell them to go sit in the corner. Mm -hmm. They tell them, then that they tell them get out of the party. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my read on it. Blanche Lambert Lincoln, the moderate uh, to conservative Democrat from Arkansas, was challenged by unions last time around and lost her primary uh, Democratic senator from Arkansas. But for the most part, I do think the Republicans hew to a much more sort of of a litmus test. Why do you think that is? Is it some? Is it psychological in some way, or or ideological, or? about uh, discipline, about uh, the attitude toward having political power? What is it, do you think? I think that's a good question. I think it has been a strategy that they felt has worked for them in coalescing and energizing their base. Increasingly, I think the Republican Party has become, and I quote uh, Tom Davis, a, a former moderate Republican congressman from Northern Virginia, in saying much the same thing. The Republican Party has become a party of older, white, male, Southern voters. Um, and they're not a party, especially with this birth control thing, that, that tends to appeal to women as much. They don't appeal to minorities. Uh, I think they, the Hispanic vote, a very rapidly growing vote, and a, and a very important swing vote, I think with their behavior, they can kiss the Hispanic vote goodbye in this election even if they pick someone like Marco Rubio to be the, the vice presidential candidate from Florida, the senator. Even if they pick him. Even if yeah. they pick him. I mean, I think they may win some Hispanic votes, but I think Hispanics are very, very upset with their rhetoric on, on immigration and on what's going on in the Southwest. And in a lot of Southwestern states, in, in Arizona, uh, uh, you know, in some of these Southwestern states, the Hispanic population is approaching or topping 50% right. of, the, of, the, of the entire state population. So this is not a trivial voting block at all. Um, so I, I, I just think they, it was a, pl a ploy to play to the base. Um, and, uh, but I think it's a mistake if they want to be a majority national party. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the book's structure and the work you did in assembling the book. Just describe, <coughs> excuse me, describe how you organized the book and, and the work you did to put it together. Yeah. <coughs> um, first of all, the most important thing to me was finding the independent voters, that they were the bedrock. I wanted to describe who they wa were. I wanted people to hear their voices. So that was critical to me, finding the independent voters. And I settled on four swing states that I would focus on. Um, the book talks about more than that. There's a chapter on Congress, a chapter on the presidency, various other things. Mm -hmm. But there are four swing states, Colorado, Ohio, Virginia, and New Hampshire, that I think are four very key swing states in different regions of the country. And so I began to reach out to independent voters in those states, and I got voter lists. 
uh, from secretaries of state mm -hmm. and registers of voters and called people on the phone at seven o'clock at night and said, just uh, called people cold. Just, just called reading, people just cold who were registered independents. Yep. Yeah.